the UK's first five day PPL ground school training for helicopter and airplane pilots and my experience is what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm Aaron Henriquez and welcome to the British Pilot Podcast. As I said, today I'm going to be talking about, I've been, I've been mentioning about helicopters for a little bit, of, little bit of time now. If you know me outside of this podcast as well, you'll know that I talk about them quite a lot, certainly more than airplanes. And I've been wanting to do my helicopter exams for quite a while. I purchased the year, all the books and all that over a year ago. And I knew I had, well, back then when I first, when I first started looking at it, I had five exams to do. That's actually now changed down to four. But that's why I'm going to be talking about my experience on the UK's first five day helicopter ground school training. I did helicopters. They also did it for, for airplane pilots as well. So I mentioned there's four exams to do, and that's because I'm on a conversion. However, for most people, if you're starting out fresh, you're probably going to have all nine exams that you have to go through. The books that I had, even though I, well, I thought I had five, they've got rid of one, which is navigation. Don't have to do that anymore. The four exams I had to do, I explained about on the last episode. So if you don't know what they are, go back to last episode and then come back and then listen in. However, I hardly read through the books. It's, to be honest, I find it really boring. I find it really hard to sit down and just read boring books. And they are boring and they can't make them entertaining. So when I first heard about, you know, the five day in-person ground school ice helicopters, I thought, well, do you know what? It's, it's, it's something worth a try. Now, the reason why I don't want to actually get started on the practical training is because of someone I know who they went ahead and they hadn't done any of their conversion exams at Aeroplane Pilot. They hadn't done their conversion exams and they went ahead and did their helicopter stuff really quickly. But then they had to stop for about a month and a half, I think, so that they could then go and do the exams because they couldn't continue anymore. And then by the time you go back, you've lost a bit of your skill set. So when you're talking about five to six hundred pounds an hour to have to redo stuff that you've already gone over, it it starts to add up quite a lot. Now, I get the buzz sometimes for about the helicopter stuff, and I like, yeah, let me just start reading, and I'll read a few pages, or you know, maybe 10, 15 pages, and then I've forgotten what was on the pages before and actually realized I didn't understand it all. So when I heard about the five-day ground school by Ice Helicopters on Instagram. I saw it for a couple of weeks and I just ignored it really. I think that's what most people did and I, I reckon it's that whole thing of not really believing that you can do ground school in five days. I thought it's nuts to be honest with you. I remember how much I had to study before for my PPL back in 2009, 2010 and I just thought it's crazy. I thought it's, it can't be done but they had a great offer and the offer was you're only going to pay for the exams and the course material. The actual instruction part was going to be free and that was for the first five students. So it's a bit of a pilot for them and it was something that, well, I thought I will gain something from anyway because it's so long since I did my PPL exams. Yes, I've done some ATPL exams as, as many of you will know, but some of them I haven't done such as air law which is one of the ones key ones that i wanted to make sure that i was brushed up on and everything else was just you know a refresher of what what needs to be done plus the four exams i actually needed to do so one morning really early i just woke up and i was just like you know what screw it let me just do it i went on to ice helicopters paid for the five-day ground school and in my head, I was like, well, I'm definitely not going to be taking these exams after the five days, but at least it should give me some understanding, some extra foundation, because I don't understand the stuff about helicopters, particularly around principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge. I know a lot about, you know, airplanes and how they work and the dynamics for them all, but helicopters didn't make sense. So they just, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be flying like in my head. Anyway, after I booked with them online, I had a call back that morning from Jordan, sorry, from Jordan. <laughs> she might hit me for that. Her name reads as Jordan, but it, it, we called her Jordan anyway, in class. And she wanted to check that I was suitable for the course. 
And she also wanted to make sure I was registered on the CIA portal because apparently that can take 10 days. And she actually didn't let me get off the phone until I would made sure I'd done it while she was on the phone with me. So, yeah, so that, that, that was good. It made sure I was ready to go um, in, time for the, in time for the course, just in case I could take the exams. Then we've got the timetable and the pre-reads um, about a week before. And they could easily be consumed over an evening or two. They were really simple to understand. Yes, I have got, you know, I've done principles of flight and and other subjects at ATPL level. I've also done them at PPL before, but we're going into the realms of helicopters now and there's stuff that I just don't understand. So yeah, it was it was good to have those pre-reads, just a bit of knowledge about what the sort of things that will be coming up um, throughout the, throughout that course. And then I just booked my ferry, because obviously, as you know, well, you might not know, it might not be obvious to you, why would it be actually? I live on the Isle of Wight. It's a little island on the south of England. That's where I currently live. So I booked my ferry and a hotel. And particularly, I booked the hotel for the principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge exams for the night between those because I knew they would be the hardest ones for me. And the rest of the week, I just stayed at my mum's in central London. So let me get on to day one now. So we arrived day one and it was basically... A bit of a miscommunication where well it it, it it wasn't it wasn't it was just the fact that the there was going to be three students on this on this course so me and two others and two of the others decided because they'd already done air law quite recently they'd actually done the air law exam as well they didn't need to do it obviously i didn't need to do it but i was going to sit there for a brush up and when i arrived it was jordan and ellie the dog a cute little dog that you may see pictures of. If you go on Instagram, you'll see some pictures of Ellie, the dog. And she learned some interesting, you know, she, she went over the air law stuff with me and learned some interesting things. And it was actually really good to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Jordan, she's got a vast array of experience, not just teaching ground school. She's an airline pilot as well. She's been an airline pilot in, in the United States for years. She's been teaching over there for years. She's been teaching over here for years fantastic really knowledgeable jordan sort of said at the start she wasn't going to be doing the principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge element of that because they have someone there who is an absolute full and through expert in helicopter and airplane uh, principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge and i've actually come across them before in my atpl airplanes principles of flight training and uh, completely agree and they're really lucky to have him on board there so yeah so I went through some stuff and there was quite a bit that have changed since 2009-2010 since I got my license there's things I wasn't aware of there's new squat codes that can be used like if you're lost these I can't remember what they're actually called but these listening squawks or whatever this you can fly around on without having to contact ATC on the radio as well. I have heard about them before, but that was only very recently, about a year ago, I heard of them. But that was something that we went over as well. And a vast array of other things. Now, I didn't want the human performance and limitations brush up that was going to be in the afternoon because I've done it to death at ATPL level not so long ago. So I just said to Jordan, look, we'll call it a day. I was really thankful for the air law brush up. And then we were going to start day two with Richard and Sarah because it was going to be, you know, great to have a, you know, really small class. Now, Richard was from up north in Leeds. Sarah is from London, but with a very Irish accent. And yeah, it was, it was good to meet them. It was good to have them both. They're both actually helicopter pilots in training now. So they both have some hours versus me. I only have one. Both of them have some hours. They've both needed seven exams, I think, out, out, out of the nine, because they've already done air law and I don't know what the other one was that each of them had done, but they'd already done it. And at that point, apart from Jordan, of course, I was the only qualified pilot there. So I was there for a brush up for the helicopter specific bits as well. So the helicopter specific exams that I had to take. And yeah, and it was, it was just a bit of a, it was a bit of a, a weird one that day because, you know, getting in, you know, TFL decided to strike and, there was a lot of traffic going up, you know, there's a lot of traffic to and from work. 
to and from work, to and from the airfield. The airfield's at Elstree, by the way. I don't even know why I didn't say that. So Ice Helicopters is based at Elstree in North London. Super simple to get to from central London. And also there's trains and stuff nearby. But anyway, back to day two. We went over meteorology and I'd done meteorology at ATPO level quite recently and it was, I didn't find it that tough. But also I didn't need to really find it that tough because I wasn't going to be taking the exam. So perhaps, you know, I was paying attention obviously and contributing and sort of talking about different things, but it was really there for Richard and Sarah to be able to do their exam. We were then introduced to the chicken wraps at Elstree Caf. I tell you, if you do go to Elstree Airport for any reason, make sure you get a chicken wrap from the caf there. It is fantastic. I think I had one every day, it made me very fat. But um, anyway, so they went off and they did their meteorology exams. They then We then did comms after that and I left for the day early while they did their comms exams. So day three, I'm not going into much detail here, by the way, about what about the format of the course. The reason for that, I just thought I'd to explain now, is because the format of the course is likely to change based on feedback that has come from us three who was initially on it, and also the instructors actually delivering the course. Now, when it comes to day three, flight planning and navigation, it was all done on half mil charts, and that's because the exams still insist they're done on half mil charts. However, for helicopters, you're apparently you're going to be using a lot more of a quarter mil chart. So one's 250,000. Now the reason for that is because you need to see a lot more detail for helicopters, particularly because you're not just landing at necessarily big airfields, you might be landing at, you know, someone's someone's back garden in a, in a country pub or, you know, some helipad somewhere and they're quite hard to see on the half mil chart. So, it's a bit it's more like zooming in for people that don't know what these charts are you, you zoom in and you've got like a, a lot more detail and anyway we did the flight planning and navigations and i had to get used to an electronic flight computer for the first time a cx3 i think it was called and to be honest with you, i just wanted my whiz wheel that's all i've ever used i've never used one of these electronic things and i did find it a bit tough at the start but actually to be honest with you by the time it came to taking the flight planning exam at the end of the day for everyone, it was actually a lot easier and quicker just to use an fl electronic flight computer. And I may well get one. I've still got my whiz wheel, but I may well get one because they are actually a lot simpler. So anyway, the course material there that was provided was above and beyond. We didn't have to bring anything. Everything was provided for us on that day so as you know for flight planning you need a few things you need you know you need the pens you need the you need protractor you need the rulers not just you know your normal ruler that measures in centimeters but one that will will measure distance on the charts what else do you need obviously the flight computer as well you need the charts themselves that was all provided by ice helicopters so that was great we didn't have to come with anything everything was there for us and all of the slides that were done by Jordan were absolutely fantastic. Just as a mention for, for people, if you do go on this course with Jordan, you'll see lots of slides which with some crazy photos of stuff and you'd assume that they were taken off of Google. But no, they were not taken off of Google. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan has an interesting has had an interesting career in aviation, I think, and some interesting experiences, and has taken some very interesting photos, which in the sort of thing where I, I've never have seen stuff like that, but yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. She's got some great photos there. So anyway, we then took the flight planning exam in the, in the evenings at the end of the day, and that was something that we all actually did. I did take that exam. I wasn't too, worried about flight planning as much. It was just the helicopter specific bits that I was more interested in around it. And really that was about the heart, you know, the quarter mil chart using that. And we didn't really touch on that, to be honest with you. So even though you have to take flight planning as part of the helicopter conversion from airplanes to helicopters, 
yeah, I, I didn't really feel like, to be honest, there was a need. You used to have to take the navigation exam. That used to be the fifth one. But for some, someone complained about it and that's been taken out. With flight planning, if it was using the quarter mil charts, because they are different, everything looks very different on them. That would have made that would have made more sense to me but it wasn't that's not to do with ice helicopters that's to do with the fact that that's what the civil aviation authority currently require as part of the examinations and that's what we're there to do so we're, when it comes to the actual flight planning element using quarter mill charts i'm absolutely sure that i'll be doing that with ice helicopter instructors further down the line so i'll get on to results a bit later day four was with ewan now, Ewan Goldsabell, um, for those of you who don't know him, he is a very unique flight instructor. A vast, vast experience in commercial um, helicopter pilot training at PPO and commercial level. He's got a aeronautical engineering degree, I believe, or aerospace engineering degree. He's been teaching ground school at ATPL and PPR level for you know, 14 years, I think it was. It, might be more, might be less. Well, I think it was about 14 years, I think he said. And yeah, he is an absolute top instructor. Goes above and beyond in every possible way to help you to understand what is a very, very complicated and difficult subject for a lot of people. Now, POF, Principles of Flight and Aircraft General Knowledge, is really my main reason for going on this ground school. Okay, yes, I wanted to brush up. Yes, I needed the flight planning to be done as well. And also ops, which we'll come to. But principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge was going to be the ones that I know I was always going to really struggle with. I've got very limited knowledge of helicopters, how they, how they work, the dynamics of them, everything. So I really needed to get that understanding in my head so I can visualize stuff on how, how they will you know, how the dynamics will work while they're in the air. Now, aircraft general knowledge as well, because just the general bits of the helicopter, you know, what they're called, the cyclic, the collective, you know, how the swash plate and all this other stuff that I'll talk about in a sec, that I don't know how they work, I don't know how they link up. I don't even know how helicopters fly because they should just fall out of the air, as far as my, my brain was concerned at that point. But it was the most intense day. It was so intense. We had 300, over 300 slides. I think it's 330 slides that we went through on that day covering principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge. And I'm so glad that I booked a hotel that evening to study and take, you know, my practice exams then. Well, I'm glad I booked the hotel anyway because when I got there and I'm not even going to talk about the hotel. The hotel was all right. Uh, it's a manor hotel I stayed at. Could be better but it was all right so i looked at the practice exam questions anyway and <laughs> yeah it, it was like as if it was like as if i just spent an entire day going through over 300 slides about the principles of flight through helicopters and aircraft general knowledge and like as if i had my headphones on like i do now if you're watching on youtube and <laughs> Yeah, and it's like it's basically like I did that and wasn't listening, just had my music blaring all day. Because when I was looked at the practice exam questions, I was like, what does this mean? Like, what is that word? I don't even know what they're talking about. So I actually, well, there were things like a Delta Free Hinge. I was like, what is that? Never heard of that before. They, we, we spoke about it that day probably, but my brain was so, so fried. I was like, never heard of that. What the hell is dynamic rollover? Don't know what that is. Like high velocity, high velocity diagram. What is that? When I realized it was dead man's curve, then I got it. I understood what, what they were talking about. But I, I reached out to Sarah, the flying mum on Instagram. Go and follow her if you're not. Yeah, she, I reached out to her because she's doing a helicopter pilot training now and had recently done some exams. And another pilot I also reached out to asking some questions, basically to find out you know, if they can help me with some of, some of the questions. So Sarah um, helped me out with a couple of bits and she knew and she, she sent me some voice notes and sort of helped me out with some of the, the questions. I asked Becca Foreman as well, who some of you may know is on this island as well. She, she'd also quite recently done her exams and helped me out 
with a couple of a few questions. But to be honest with you, I I took the decision because my brain was so fried. Literally, I've never been that stressed out and that overloaded overloaded and overwhelmed. My brain just felt like it was going to explode. All I could really manage was food and a bath. And I just had to put the practice papers down and just be like, I pray to God or whoever else you pray to, don't want to offend anyone, that my brain would sort everything out overnight. And yeah, so that's all I did. I literally had food and a bath. Jordan messaged me, the instructor, because I put I put some status up on Instagram about like brain being fried and she was like, you'll be all right. And I said to her, look, I'm just gonna have a bath. And I think she thought I was joking. I actually wasn't. I just did that and then I went to bed. And that was it. So I woke up the next day, very worried, didn't want to take the exam. I was so stressed out about it. And we was back in the classroom, day five with you and first thing in the morning, got in there a bit early and we were going over practice exams questions. So the same exams, like the practice exam questions we had to take away that evening, we went through all of those and we went through explanations for all of them. I did actually do some of them in the morning before you joined and actually started to realize some of the stuff had started processing properly. So, and we went over some of the bits that I didn't understand and you in being you and he doesn't just tell you the answers. He will give you a full explanation with demonstrations and will show you stuff as well. So literally we went down to view the helicopter because there was some questions that three of us didn't understand and you and could read, read us really well. I mean, I think we're all being a bit too coy to say, yeah, actually, we don't fully understand this, you know, and I think he could read that in us. And he's just like, look, let's go downstairs. Let's go and look at helicopters. We've got helicopters here. Let's go and look at them so you can visualize and actually see what it is we're talking about and how they operate. We did that and certain things clicked, like how the swash plate works and the cyclic and the collective, how they all sort of fit together and work together. Because in the classroom, it felt to me like they should, they're working against each other. And obviously, that doesn't make sense for them to do that. Droop stops, again, that was one that came up in the evening before. I was like, what the hell is a droop stop? Like, what is that? And then actually being able to see what it is, to be able to visualize what it does, made sense. And that, obviously, that delta free hinge. Oh, my God. Yeah, and explaining how it works and why it is the way it is. It just made things so much clearer by doing that. And that's something you're never going to get just from a book at home. So... We did, we did a mock exam. Actually, we did a mock exam for each of the papers that we did. For each, before each exam, there was a mock exam we had to do. And we did the mock exam and actually did much better than on that than I thought I would. So a lot more actually stuck. And we did that on POF. I know it was a bit split. Me and Richard wanted to do just the POF exam and then do the AGK exams. I know Sarah was a bit more keen to do POF and AGK sort of practice questions at the start and then do the both exams straight afterwards. But we ended up doing the POF exam first. Well, we ended up doing the, the mock exam paper for POF first, and then we did the POF exam. And I will let you know how we got on at the end, but Ewan went off just in time for his heli students after that. So we, we let me go back. I just started a bit there. We did a POF exam first, then we went on and did the AGK marks and then the AGK exam. Then Ewan had to go off to go and do his flight instruction, I think yeah, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. lesson with with one of his students actually going out flying. But he was great. He stayed around, made sure we were all done and had done the exams before he left. Now, you do get the exam results quite quickly compared to ATPL exams. They come within minutes for the PPL exams. I haven't done them before on this on this sort of computer training for PPL level. When I did it, it was on paper. So it's a bit different and there's no, you know, there's, it's, well, it's less, you know, basically exam papers that you've done that maybe not done so well on can't just disappear. It's actually on your record now. So yeah, not that they used to before, CAA. So anyway, we went. We then straight, went straight into operational procedures with Jordan, and 
we took the mock and then the exam. Now, obviously I've spoken a lot about POF and AGK because that for me was definitely the hardest, hardest part of this course. And I knew it was gonna be. It, it's the main reason why I went there, needing that in-person training. I'm not gonna get it from the book, not really gonna understand it. Even if I could pass the exam, I wouldn't have understood how this stuff works. All that stuff that Ewan showed us, I wouldn't have known. You know, but we, we went through the operational procedures with Jordan and that was great actually to learn the slight differences in ops for helicopters and yeah, and then we went on to those exams. So I, I will tell you about how the exams went. It was a bit of a mixed, a bit of a mixed flat playing field there in terms of results. But the main thing is we did take all the exams, all of us did, and we, we took all the exams at some point. And what I'll do first though, is talk about my thoughts on the course as a whole, because I think it's really important for you. If you're listening to this thinking, yes, actually I wanna do a five day ground school. I think this part is probably relevant for you to listen to, okay? Because it's not easy. And you know, if you think about five days, five days in the classroom is 40 hours. I'd always been told that PPL ground school is about 200 hours of study. Okay, so obviously there's a, a massive shortfall there and you've got to think, well, how is that? How are you getting that much? How are you getting everything that you need? And still cramming it into 40 hours instead of 200 hours. So anyway, let me start at the price of the course. So at the time of recording, the course was priced at £1,500 for an intensive and it's a really well thought out course. Honestly, it is really well thought out. I think Jordan has put in a tremendous amount of effort to create all of the slides and the content and delivered it in a way where it cuts out all the waffle crap and it just gets to points that you need to know and understand, not just for the exam, stuff that you actually need as a pilot to understand. That's what she's done. She is a, remember, she is an airline pilot by trade. That is her normal you know, that, that is her trade. She's an airline pilot. Safety means a lot to her to make sure that, you know, pilots and people who may potentially be sitting next to her one day, you know, as a pilot, will understand what they're doing properly, not just the ability to pass an exam. Now, for me, I would have put the harder subjects, I say harder subjects because it's, it's different for everyone, I guess. You know, I would say principles of flight and aircraft general knowledge for me were definitely the hardest subjects of this course okay and I thought they always would be so I would have had them at the start however when I spoke to Richard about it actually he found meteorology harder now I may have agreed with him but then I just you know also realized I've actually done ATPL meteorology with a superb instructor who goes into levels of detail which is insane but it's, it's something where I've, I've spent months on actually studying and not too long ago. And yes, I didn't need the exam. Perhaps that's why I didn't find it so difficult. And maybe I wasn't that concerned about, I don't know, if, if my brain sort of wandered off and started thinking about something else or something. But Richard found the concept of meteorology harder than principles of flight. And one of the reasons he, he sort of mentioned was perhaps because he's actually done an aircraft general knowledge. He's actually done some helicopter training he's got you know I can't remember how many hours he's got but he's definitely got a good few hours in I'm pretty sure he's actually solo to be honest with you for for helicopter training but uh, anyway so he's understands a lot of the, the concepts already and can visualize how certain things work together and whatever whereas I couldn't so it is it is more subjective but there are things which are just easier like comms that I think could be put towards the end of the week. I, I'd rather the harder subjects, POF, AGK, meteorology, at the start of the week, so that we focus on those and make sure there's more a bit more time allocated to them as opposed to 300 slides in one day was just too much. That should have been over a day or two, a day and a half or two, possibly, if we could. I put in some more regular short breaks, but I have to bear in mind, this is an intensive course. There isn't time for, you know, going on you know, half hour, hour long breaks every now and then. We, in fact, I think every day we worked through 
like we had working lunches so we were being given instruction whilst also eating now Jordan and Ewan are both excellent and like I said they really bloody care you know you can tell that both of them I, I know Ewan already like from ATPL principles of flight he really really cares about his his students obviously I didn't know Jordan before this one but the same the amount of effort she has put in to this to creating this course is unreal it's 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 so well thought out that it actually made it possible that you could you could have studied all of those exams in those five days you could have studied all of the subjects all nine subjects in those five days and be able to take the exams at the end now I would also recommend that particularly for POF and AGK and if you haven't got any experience before if you're not if you're not doing a conversion from airplanes to helicopters so you've done no principles of flight you don't understand anything unless you've you know perhaps got done it somewhere else in your own spare time but you don't really understand anything around it and so for me I would say five to ten hours of flight training before you go on this course this is an intensive course I think personally that if I was brand new person on day one and this is just me but I think if I had no flight training at all if I hadn't had principles of flight and sort of instruction before at ATPL if I hadn't had had some of these subjects done at PPL level and already had an understanding of it I think as a completely fresh person from the street with no flying experience I would not have been able to do this course now when I spoke to Jordan at the end of the course about this it is actually it's not actually really designed for that fresh off the street person there was some discussion about whether or not you know it should be five hours 10 hours 20 hours of flight training before you actually take a course like this but I think some flight training definitely more than the one hour that I had would would be really helpful so that you've already got an understanding of how these things work because I could have held the class back quite a lot particularly if I had no prior understanding of POF and no had done no had no experience or tra any training at all I'd never even seen in a helicopter if I was one of them people I wouldn't have known I think I would have found it a lot more difficult so this is the first time remember guys and girls and they and them if you prefer to be called they and them this is the first time this is being done anywhere in the UK it's probably anywhere in the world and no doubt it is going to improve not that I'm saying there's much to improve on to be honest with you it was a really great well thought out course it's like it's, I, I actually wasn't aware until sort of the last couple of days that this is the first run they had I thought they had they had done another run of it but they hadn't this is the first run of this course they had done and it was really 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 good and I can't credit Jordan enough you know for for creating it in the way that she did and for Ewing coming on board and delivering it in his own unique way he's really entertaining and engaging how he how he how he does his um, instruction so for the results now down to the results so it was a mixed bag like I say but I'm pleased to say that we actually did all get first time passes in all the exams that we took and they were pretty good ones at that so for my results in flight planning let me just stop a second when it comes to PPL exams for the CAA there's there's a pro and a con to the amount of questions so some of the exam papers have 12 questions some of them have 16 the problem is you can only get you know three or four wrong before you fail that's the problem so you really need to <laughs> you really need to understand it because you know you get one question wrong and this will give you the result that I give you on this one so flight planning I got 91% however however I do know that it would be a hundred percent had one of the questions not been wrong in the exam well the question wasn't wrong the answers were wrong and it wasn't just me that said that I calculated is a simple calculation really really simple calculation I did it like five or six times I flagged it to an instructor instructors 
that later actually looked at looked at that exact question they'd also calculated it and they come up the same answer as me none of the answers there were anywhere near what the answer what the real answer was for that question and so that's something that's going to be sent off to the CAA to sort of flag up as your questions or your answers are wrong basically and the nearest one you think well choose the nearest one the nearest one is what I chose and that flagged up as being the wrong wrong answer basically so it was it should be 100% but it was 91% was my official result but CAA got something wrong lo and behold would you believe it operational procedures I've got 100% aircraft general knowledge 87% and principles of flight, 91%. So it was a 92% average, which was good. I, I'm very happy with that. I now don't have to do any more exams. When I do get onto the helicopter flight training, I can just go straight into it and not have to worry about stopping at any point because I've got exams to take. Now I've only got 18 months because I've taken all the exams I need to take. And the same for Richard and Sarah. They've only got 18 months from the date of the last exam to now actually go and complete helicopter pilot training. So better get a wiggle on. Now, Martin, who is the owner of Ice Helicopters, he actually visited and we had a well-deserved beer together at the end of the course and, you know, had a little catch up and a bit of feedback was shared, the sort of feedback that I've already given, you know, on the, on the price, on the structure, on you know, is it designed for new people or is it people who've got a few hours? Personally, I think people have got a few hours. I've been talking about helicopter stuff, like five to 10 hours, because I'm there for helicopter stuff, not for aeroplanes. But that ground school is also being done for aeroplane pilots as well. OK, so the vast majority of the training that you get delivered is for aeroplanes as well. But there's add on stuff which is for helicopter pilots specific. Okay, so the stuff you learn in principles of flight all explains all about airplanes as well, but then you get a load of stuff on top of that about um, helicopters specifically. Okay, so we, we had a chat about that. Martin Yona, he's, if you haven't heard of Martin, he's, he's an interesting guy. He, he did his pilot training He's realized he could be he could do it better. He did his helicopter pilot training, he realized he could do it better, and so he decided to open up his own flights flight school. He's not an instructor at all, but he's got he's able to get some of the best instructors from the in the UK in this one in this one training center, which is all the aircraft are brand new, like they're it's really up to date and modern. The center itself is, is unlike any other flying school you'll ever see. Well, unlike anyone that I've ever seen anyway, they're all usually a bit sort of outdated and, you know, just a bit old and because they don't really make much money or whatever, like flight schools. So he's done a completely, he's done something completely new, something completely different. If you think about helicopter training, definitely go down there to have a look at least because you'll see the difference instantly from traditional helicopter training schools. But anyway, we had that well-deserved beer and I had to head off, I'm afraid, early because I'd already made an arrangement to meet someone at the Aviator Hotel in Farnborough, which was awesome, by the way. I, I need another reason to go back to Farnborough because the Aviator Hotel there was excellent. Great cocktails in their sky bar. Their, their brasserie was awesome as well. Like, is that how you say it? Is it called brasserie? I'm probably going to let someone say it. it's not brasserie, it's brasserie or something like that. But yeah, really, really nice hotel. And I had a nice room looking over Farnborough Airfield and seeing all the jets coming in and out in the morning, which was great. So anyway, I'm really happy, super happy that I've managed to get through PATH and AGK and not just pass the exams, but actually now understand loads of stuff I just didn't understand before about how helicopter dynamics work. And would I say if I'd have paid the £1,500 for the course, would it have been worth it? Absolutely Yes, absolutely yes, because I'd spent over a year trying to read through this 60 quid book. There's nothing wrong with the book. The book is great. It's like one of the best ones out there. It's the Poolies. The Poolies one is what I've got. But for me, I prefer in-person training. I, I don't, I'm not really big on just reading out of a book and understanding it. Some people can. It's not for me. So 
would I have paid 1500 quid and thought I had good, good value for money? Absolutely yes. So if you are thinking about doing your exams, even if, or if you just need a brush up, it's worth doing even just for a brush up. If you're thinking about doing your exam for your helicopter pilot training or for your aeroplane pilot training at a PPL level, this is only PPL level at the moment. If you are thinking of that, head over to ICE Helicopters. Okay, go and speak to them. See about when the next five day PPL ground school is coming about. Let them know that you heard about it through the podcast here. Okay, I won't get anything for it, but let them know so they know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe Martin would be kind and and give me a flight. In his in his MD twenty five twenty, I think it's got on a no tar. Tail, well, it's not a tail rotor system. It's like a one without a tail rotor. It's it's awesome. It looks awesome anyway. It's like something out of James Bond. But anyway, I'll leave the links to Ice Helicopters and Jordan in the show notes as well. The only reason why I'm not leaving you in is because I don't think he has any links. I don't think he's on social media. So, I'll, yeah, I'll leave the links to Ice Helicopters and Jordan and anything else that I might think of that makes sense to leave there. And yeah, you know, if this was helpful for you, let me know. Get in contact with me. You know, you can find me on Instagram. That's Aaron Henry, A-A-R-O-N-Y. Um, or you can go on the website, leave a comment, go on YouTube, whatever. If you want to watch this, just it's just me sitting there. If you'd prefer to watch it on YouTube, you can. I probably should have said that at the start. It's just me sitting there with my headphones on. But uh, yeah, what I'd like you to do though, if you don't mind, is if you're listening on Apple, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you could just scroll down to the bottom and click on write a review, and just leave a nice, kind five-star review. Listen, just leave a five-star review with a few comments if there's something that you found useful for it. If you have any questions or anything as well, put your put your put put it in your comments, okay? Because I will read them. And it just helps the podcast get a little bit higher in the, in the listings because there's not many British aviation podcasts out there. Most of them are American, as you know. So I want to try and get this out to as much of the British audience as I can. Now, I'm also trying to get someone to come on who I think will be inspirational for many, many pilots out there, particularly female pilots. And I'm going to do my best. I'm going to keep trying, keep plugging away to see if I can get her to come on and actually talk about her experience of flight training, how she's paying for it and all the struggles going through ATPLs and everything like that. So anyway watch this space. I've got a dash. I've got a training course in three minutes for the rest of the day today. So yeah, happy flying everyone. And yeah, helicopters are the way forward, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely hooked. Helicopters are the way forward. I don't even know why I did an airplane license in the first place. It makes no sense. But anyway, good luck and stay safe.